Com is on the air. See, that's what I always wait to hear, to know if I'm late or not. <laughs> are we here? Are we on? You are. Anything I say can and will be held against me. That's what I read. <laughs> Laura Dwyer Slecky here today. And we have a guest. We and Jackie have, is here. And Jackie's always the support in the background. <laughs> um, and we have Scott Tenbrick. Is it Tenbrick? Ten. Ten. Ten, like Brink. the number. Brink. B R I N K. Brink. Brink, like the I always I. add an E or something. I always want to make it more flavorful. There's, there's not enough Dutch people around here to, <laughs> is that what to that be is? able to pronounce my name. That must yeah. be what it is. Scott is from the Fitness Council. And I asked him to come on because last week a tragedy happened and it really, really bothered me. The three guys that were in the bicycle accident in Georgia. Two, one was from Grass Lake, one from Munich, and one was from Ann Arbor. And the Ann Arbor guy was a friend, and he's the one who was killed. Oh, wow. Hit by a semi, so I said, let's, even Bill mentioned, we need to talk about biking and safety and bike lanes and all that wonderful stuff. So I called Scott, and here he is. And thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad, though, that we have to have a tragedy it to, to bring light I to think the issue. A lot of times that is what brings these these issues to light. It's either that or infrastructure projects that people are <laughs> that are unpopular. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, you have to have something like this happen to highlight things. That's not the way I would ever choose to have things move forward, but uh, I think it is a good opportunity, like you pointed out, to have a discussion about it. It's not something that happened in our community. No, it happened in Georgia. But, and actually, uh, they were on a highway, which, uh, you know... I, I would never bicycle on a highway. And it was the break of dawn. And I wouldn't do it in at the dark. At that hour, yeah. right. So I think there were some biker errors, maybe. There were, I you know, know, I read... Um, a few things, you know, kind of followed the M Live article a little bit, um, some postings on Facebook, and one of the things that I heard was on a highway. What are you doing on a highway? Right. But uh, so I looked at the map and kind of looked at what highway this was. Okay. And first of all, in Michigan, you're not allowed to ride on any limited access freeways. That's one of the so rules. So I ninety four, one twenty seven. Parts of one twenty seven. Okay. Um, but it's anything that takes a ramp to get onto exactly, the highway. Exactly. Okay. But anything that uh, doesn't have a ramp is fair game for cyclists, and you might argue is a decent place to ride. And here's a really good example of it: one twenty seven going south from Page. No. Uh, McDivitt. McDivitt. Mm -hmm. So then it turns into, uh, it's got cross streets, the, there's right. even a light on 127 down by Clark Lake, right? Yeah, yeah. But Scott, that's not even safe to drive <laughs> out there. And, and I agree. Let alone being on a bicycle. Yeah, yeah. and right. the, the only thing that uh, I would point out about it is it's fast moving traffic, it's truck traffic, those kind of dangerous situations for cyclists, but it's got a 14 foot wide shoulder. So you can get a good ways off, off of, of the main road. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the points of what happened in Georgia. Uh, and I'm this information is secondhand, but right. based on what I've read, mm -hmm. um, they had one of the white fog lines with a shoulder on it, which, mm -hmm. which is really good. And I'll talk a little bit more about what we're doing in Jackson with that. Um, but there was about two feet of pavement, which is not enough to, to ride a bike on. But it, it's common to have about a two foot shoulder sure. on a state highway like that. Um, but they added a rumble strip mm -hmm. on that. So it forces the cyclist, because it's impossible, especially on the type of bike they were riding, to ride over a rumble strip. So it forces them into the roadway. Oh, so they weren't on the shoulder? They couldn't be on the shoulder because it was a Too rumble narrow. strip. Oh, got it. You know, it's that red yeah, yeah, yeah. thing that right. wakes you up when you fall asleep. So, the, the, it's, so you really shouldn't be there. It's likely that the semi-driver didn't cross I mean, I'm assuming that the semi-driver crossed the white line, I, but it's I, possible I, that he didn't. I haven't read any facts. Right. I'm not... Well, I'm going to the, the funeral story. tomorrow, so but, um, I may find out more. But I think that's one of the kind of mitigating factors. Right. And the, the, so the other thing to point out is this highway was very similar to M99 
if you can imagine, M99 go, goes through Springport. It's a two-lane road. Oh, okay. It's a state highway. Right. But it's in rural Georgia. I think, you know, in looking at it, it was probably 60 miles from the closest freeway. Got it. So it's not a uh, limited access situation right. or anything like that. There are some states where cyclists are actually allowed to ride on limited access freeways, but they make some accommodations for those cyclists. California's one and uh, North Carolina's one. Um, so what's Jackson doing with uh, strips? Well, a couple really great things that they're doing. First of all, they're not doing a lot of bike lanes uh, on county I, roads. On county roads. Oh, okay. There are there are a few marked, but what they are doing is adding a wide shoulder. So it's about a four foot to four and a half foot wide shoulder on new projects. Uh, a really good example of In that the county is County Farm R Road. Right. Okay. So if you think of the sections of County Farm Road that have been Repenched. repaved, mm -hmm. and they're going to do that whole the whole road pretty soon, um, you'll see that they add that wide shoulder on there, right? Mm -hmm. And that does a couple things. First of all, it provides a great place for cyclists to ride, gets them out of the main flow of traffic. It also makes the road last a whole lot longer because often roads crumble from the edge out um. as a result of heavy truck traffic being on the edge of that road. So it does a whole lot to preserve our roads too. So it's one of the really good examples of a win-win for for bicycles Everybody. and road. Yeah, and although auto. one of my pet peeves is choosing saying you're either a cyclist or a automobile auto. driver because I drove here today and <laughs> I still think I'm a cyclist. And right. And I drove and I bike. have two yeah. types of bikes. Right. right. Are you taking calls? Yes. Good morning. Well, Hello. Um, I live on Napoleon Road. Yeah. And uh, this weekend they had a big bike deal going on. I don't know, there's hundreds and hundreds of bikes. But some of these bikes are there four across, and you had a parade of people, I don't know how many cars, going down the road at 20 miles an hour in a 55 mile an hour zone. And these people are getting frustrated because the bikes aren't moving over. And if you pass them, they, I mean, sometimes you get to see your stuff from them. But, uh, I mean, I can see bikes, bicycle people have bikes, but, you know, we pick these up, uh, and then they pick these on their cars. Maybe they should have a team when they buy a bike that maybe helps these lanes and stuff for bicycles. I, I can see it more you have them on the road, but this is a 55 mile, and there's a lot of curves here. You come around a curve, and you know, people go 55, don't see these bikes, and kind of put them in trouble. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't I wouldn't drive a bike on Napoleon Road. No. no. I know when I ride in the middle of the road, it's like down. Thanks for the call. Appreciate the, it. And the traffic is supposed to go really slow, anyways. So. Yeah, and it sounds like the the caller's example there was an organized ride, mm -hmm. something that's quite different than what happened in Georgia and um, what you on see a, most of the time day, with cyclists. You'll day. see one, two, maybe four of them. This sounds like a big group that had an organized ride, and I don't know whether they did this or not, but when you have an organized ride, you should be contacting local officials, uh, the police department, letting them know what you're going to do. It's a special situation, just like a parade. Right. Maybe you don't close the road down, and they frequently don't for bike rides like that and for foot races. We have races through town. They don't close the roads for those. And we have people running in the street, and I can see the same call coming in saying, I came downtown, and there were a bunch of people running through the streets, right. and they belong on the sidewalk. Well, it was a special event. So a little different situation there. but Right. And hopefully they called the... Napoleon Township officials and yeah, yeah. got permit. So, so the the rattle. What do you call the rumble strips? Rumble yeah. strips is was wouldn't be a necessarily a good idea to put under the white lane. So that is because my concern when I'm biking is that. And Bill went biking actually yesterday, and he called me with the gory details of how many times he almost got killed, which was three times. Where cars don't slow down, they go 55, and, and I'm, I saw a statistic somewhere where if it's a male rider, they're less likely to move over <clears throat> than if it's a female rider. Is that true? It, there was a study in the UK, so oh. not in the States, but they did two things. First, they looked at if you, if you what was the passing, passing distance, whether you were wearing a helmet or not. Oh, right, okay. And they found that if you wore a helmet, people passed closer to you 
than if you didn't wear a helmet. And then that same rider did the ride with and without a ponytail. Okay. So basically what they did was they thought that that was making them look like a woman versus a man. Right. I'm not sure if a man with a ponytail, I don't know if you have a people ponytail. are taking Right. <laughs> It's to keep the cars, the cars wide and away from me because they found that with the ponytail, drivers were giving more passing space. And what the conclusion of the study was is that anybody who looks like a less capable rider, they give more space to. Got it. Now that's, you know, you can argue that's a pretty sexist view. And right. I would say that in general, women are much more uh, safe confident and effective riders than men who make a lot of dumb decisions in, uh, in right, my experience right. well, Bill, and in my personal experience. <laughs> yeah. Well, Bill and one of his buddies were racing and they got their handlebars caught and he ended up in the hospital with collarbone and broken ribs and it was not pretty. After that, he gave away his motorcycle. I'm taking calls. <laughs> yes. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, uh, I think people that own cars and drive every day Well, and that was one of the things that happened to Bill yesterday. He was driving along or riding on his bike, and on the other side of the road, there was a car going slow, so someone passed the car. And of course, at the exact same time they're passing the car, Bill's in his bike lane. And that wasn't pretty either. Yeah, I see that danger all the time. I see people in the city riding on the sidewalks, just bumping the fence of the camera right in front of you know, driveways and city lanes, you know, that people can just come out between buildings without seeing a bicycle. I mean, everybody kind of just needs to learn the law of them uh, right away. Right, pay attention. Pay hey, attention, yeah. You pass a bicycle, but you got to pay attention to the oncoming traffic. I mean, you have, you have, you're yielding right away to the as well as the bicycle. So you have to slow down. If anything, a stop car or a bicyclist only going 20 miles an hour, you have to yield to them, not let the you know, right. traffic swerve off the road, because you have to drive around somewhere. Sure, sure. This, this brings up probably... Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. From, uh, from our perspective at the Fitness Council and Bike Advocacy, one of the biggest issues is education. And that comes from two sides. First of all, you have to realize that cyclists have no formal education on riding a bike on the road. There may be people, I'm trained as a certified instructor, so I have a high level of, uh, through the League of American Bicyclists, so I have kind of a high level of understanding of what's going to happen out there and what my responsibilities are. But at the same time, an eight-year-old kid can ride, is allowed to ride their bike. And I don't think that the solution is to require a license to ride a bike because we have so many people who use bikes as transportation that don't have access to a vehicle and have issues with licensing problems. Now, we still need to educate those people. And I think in our community, the communities that are successful are the ones that can educate their community on how to ride a bike. And then the caller brings up Safety. people in vehicles also need to have some understanding of what is expected from a bike on the road. Scott, are there general rules of thumb? Yeah ride with traffic, regardless of whether you choose the sidewalk, a bike path, um, in the road. So if I'm on the sidewalk, I'm coming home to my house on Michigan Avenue from downtown, I should be on the other side of the street. You because should, that's the you way... Be riding with traffic. Right, because that's the way people are looking to see if cars are coming. Yeah, Okay. especially the right turn. If you can envision making a right turn, you're always looking to your left. Mm -hmm. So if you have somebody coming against traffic towards you, you're going to run them over before you even turn your head to see them. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, there's three levels of cyclists, basically, if we break it down, A, B, and C. C is children. They always belong on a spot where you don't have traffic. The sidewalk is an okay place, better places on trails or in empty parking lots, someplace where they can practice because they're not stable, their turning and balancing is poor. Then you've got B-level cyclists, 
and they know how to ride a bike, but don't do a lot of it, don't have a lot of experience interacting with traffic on a bike. And uh, those are the people that are really good to ride on trails, find some places, low traffic roads, those kind of things. And then A, adult cyclists. Uh, generally someone who is comfortable riding a bike should be riding in the traffic lane with traffic. And there's some statistics. Is that true even like on Michigan Avenue? Like in front of my place, for example? Yes. So what's true about that is that <laughs> they're safer to be in traffic, in the road, than they are on the sidewalk. Okay. And here's just some very basics. Bike car crashes happen almost exclusively, not, not exclusively, most of them happen at intersections. And mm -hmm. they happen because the car didn't see the bike, or the driver of the car didn't see the bicyclist. Mm -hmm. So at every intersection, the sidewalk shares space with the road. That's where the crashes are happening. It's not so much, and George is an example of the exception, somebody coming up behind and running you over from behind because they didn't see you. Now there's some, like we said, it was at dawn, they were headed east. Mitigating What about mitigating those situation? people who are texting while they're driving or on their cell phone well, that's, yeah. or drinking coffee or what have you? That's what scares me while I'm biking. Never against the tra traffic? Never against traffic. So walk against traffic, roll with traffic is kind of the, the mantra. Are you taking calls? Yes. Good morning. Me again. One more thing on that right away. Yeah. You see people, absolutely, I mean, relinquish their right of way on a five lane road, stop in a far right lane to let just somebody out during a green light, red light, doesn't matter, they stop and let, try to let that person get out of a parking lot or a business zone, you know, driveway or yeah. something. Not even caring about the other two lanes, the turn lanes, the two oncoming lanes, and then there's a bicycle coming perfectly legal down the right side. Mm -hmm. You know, so the person that they're letting out isn't paying attention to anything but their chance to get out. And guess what happens? That bicycle, he's the first one. Well, hopefully yeah, the bicyclist is watching what's going on, too. Well, sure, but I can tell you when I'm in traffic, I'm paying attention. I, I think um, this kind of highlights for me as somebody who rides my bike around quite a bit, mm -hmm. I really try to follow the rights and responsibilities that I have as part of traffic. It's very frustrating for me when I pull up to an intersection, the other way has the right of way, but they stop. Because right at that point, it goes from, I know exactly what's going to happen, I have a stop sign, I wait for traffic to clear and I go. Now somebody's stopped and they're waving at me and somebody else is coming from the other way and I have no idea what's going to happen next and we're all sitting there and somebody behind me is getting anxious because nothing's happening. So it creates a lot of confusion. But I do understand that when you're in your car you see a lot of different cyclists. You mm -hmm. see people weaving all over the road, you see people that don't seem to know what they're doing, you see people who probably aren't in a condition that they should be on a bicycle and you see these lycra clad superhero looking cyclists you know you see all these different kinds and it's hard to put together in your head what those sure. what those they're gonna are. do well we're out of time so um scott how can somebody get a hold of the Thank fitness you, council you can get a hold of, of us at 990-9798 mm -hmm. or at fitnesscouncil.org and we have all our contact information on our website okay. and facebook of course okay facebook um, and they have some great programs and some fun events, I might add. Uh, we have an open house 1 to 2.30 in, at uh, 8036 Sharon Drive. That's down to 66885. We're creative with our numbers. Um, that Sunday, 1 to 2.30, Western Schools. And then we have a ton of price reductions. Uh, Coon Hill Road, Pringle, Updike, Sharon... Commonwealth all have price reductions. So if you want to live in any of those homes, call us 780-3800. Thinkingrealestate.com. This is Sheriff Steve.